Alright, so in today's video, I'm going to be going over how you can make a profit and prepare for the new mayor. Fitting in, good old farmer boy. Good old classy farmer from Idaho, or who the hell knows where, no one knows. With his fake ass boots. Um, the point is, he's a new mayor that was just added, he has a few perks, I'll go over them later. They're all about farming related and uh, anti-vegan in nation. Take that, vegan teacher. I'm going to be going over how you can make a bunch of profit from him, right now, during the event, after the event. All the stuff you need to know about this mayor and how to make a profit from him. Before we get into that though, I have a challenge for you guys. This is a month long challenge. If I'm able to somehow hit 20,000 subscribers by the end of the month, you guys will receive 300 million coins and a face reveal. I don't want that, no. You don't have to subscribe if you don't want to. I don't really want to show my face or give away money to you guys. So, you know. I don't think you can do it anyways, that's why I had it. Because I think it's impossible. Prove me wrong if you want to. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's get into it. Now, in order to understand how to make money from this new mayor, we first have to understand what the hell he do. If he's like a berry type mayor, if he's a good mayor, bag mayor, I don't know, man. He is a farmer's man. He's got Peltpocalypse, Farming Simulator, and Goated. Man's over here looks like a young old farmer boy. Either way, three perks. Let's go over the last one first, because I want to be different. Goated. Jacob's farming brackets include 10% more of every player's. This is basically the U.S. opening up, opening up their immigration policies to let the Mexicans in, and other people as well. We don't discriminate here. But it makes more people in, makes more people happy who otherwise would not be able to get in. If you've got Average Joe over there who averages a silver, he might be able to get a gold this time. And that's always fun. Here is what this means. People are going to be participating in the farming contests more often as they'll be making more profit, and those who are on the brink of getting gold, now are basically gonna guaranteed get gold. Now, what does this mean for money? A, farming events are probably gonna be pretty profitable, because of all the other perks that's happening as well. But you should do farming events if you're not quite able to get gold. If you ain't skilled enough to get gold, which to be fair, I can't say anything right now, but... So now more and more people are gonna be doing the farming contests, they're gonna be cultivating, gathering that crop. Harvesting that grain, getting that bread. And as such, a few things are going to change. More and more Jacob tickets will be in circulation, and more and more Turbo Books will be in circulation. This means that odds are the price is going to dive bomb, alright? It's going to dive bomb harder than James Charles's career, which is now non existent. So, point is, these things are going to get a lot cheaper, most likely. They might not, but I think they're going to get cheaper. Same thing goes for Turbo Books. Because more people do it, more people can get the better awards. This means if you were to invest during the Finnegan Man, you might be able to make some profit. Not a guarantee, though. You also could lose money. I ain't a genie. Now, what about his other perks? Next one, Farming Simulator. There is a 25% chance for Mathematical Hose and the Cultivating Enchant to count twice. Now, what this means is pretty simple. Basically, it will double the numbers on your counter. So, for example, let's just say the logarithmic and the Collection Analysis. Basically speaking, with this current hoe, you would harvest 16% more sugar canes. Harvest plus 16% sugar canes per digit on the counter, minus 4, yada yada yada. But that has a 25% chance to trigger more often. So, you're going to be getting double crops more often. You're going to be harvesting a bunch more often. Some of that stuff. Same thing goes for the actual cultivating, which means you're going to get more... 25% more farming fortune and farming wisdom when mining, at least you have a chance to get more. All in all, this part is meh. It's not really going to make you a whole lot of money, but this does potentially mean that the cultivating enchant and bazaar is going to rise up in price. Cultivating costs you 4,000 bits, you can sell for 1.2 mil. Comparison, other stuff, you can usually sell for 1.8. So potentially, investing in cultivating books might not be a horrible idea, I just don't think you're going to make a whole lot of profit. But from this actual thing, you can't make money. Or at least nothing substantial, right? You'll make the pennies and the dimes, but you ain't gonna be making millions of coins. It's not that great. It's nice, but not spectacular. Now for the last part. This perk is the anti-veganator perk. You probably ask, oh, why do you call it that? It encourages hunting. Yay. Finnegan's two philosophies is get that bread and kill that cow. That's pretty much it. He just wants some new pair of clothing, because that looks raggedy as shit. So he needs more pelts, that's the reason why. But this has the highest potential to make you profit. 
Now, 1.5 times more pelts from Trevor in the Mushroom Desert, that's not really good. You're getting 3 instead of 2. You're getting, you know, you're getting some more, but not that much more. It's not that spectacular. You can also hunt a new trapper mob. Maybe we'll take one out of Sleepy Joe's book and just have a random humanoid looking ass thing that can't walk and can't climb upstairs, but who the hell knows? For legal reasons, that last part is a joke. The biggest part is there is a new trapper shop. This part is huge. Probably wondering, what, well, why? Right now, pelts have very, very little purpose. There's only one thing they're used for, and that is at Tony's shop, where you can buy yourself a minion to tier, tier 12. None of the farming minions are really that good, so it's not like it's going to change up that much. People don't really use it. But, with the addition of a new shop, there is potential that these pelts will actually become useful. The Islands might also do this as a joke and to get everyone to get more pelts and then release some stupid ass item that don't do shit. They finna make a Jerry Gun V2, except it shoots rapids instead of the Jerry's or whatever. And it's gonna be worse. Like, they're, logically, they should have something good that you can sell for profit. There's a very, very small chance that they're gonna decide, haha, meme time, and just screw everyone. But the point is, pelts are gonna become a lot, lot more valuable in the upcoming game. They, what am I saying? They didn't become more valuable after the update drops, which ain't saying a lot, because they're worth literally nothing. I'm sorry, have you tried selling a tier 11 minion? That shit don't sell. The only reason people get tier 11 minions is for the collection. They don't really make money. The only one that might make money is potentially a chicken, a rabbit, or a sheep minion if you have the right setup and you're doing some funky stuff to them. Actually, I'd see a sheep minion. If you got the machine with the beacon piled on thing going, Tier 11 Sheet Minion, bust down even more, holy. The point is, pelts are becoming a lot more valuable. This is the biggest part where you can make money. There's two ways. Either you get pelts now and then buy the items during the shop, sell them, or you buy the items when the event comes, and when the event and the shop no longer exist, you just sell them for more profit. Those are the two ways you're going to be able to make the most money, depending on how useful the items are. That means you, you, need to get pelts. Like, now. Now, how do you get pelts? You talk to Trevor the Trapper, he'll give you 10 minutes, you accept the task, it'll give you an item of different rarities, from trackable to elusive, each of them giving you more and more and more stuff to a bunch of different animals. It'll also show you the track amount of location on the map, if you look. I'm just going to give a few quick tips for this one. Number one, F3B is one of your biggest friends, it helps you illuminate all these mobs, makes it a lot easier to tell. Tip number two. They're not a mushroom cow. If you see a mushroom cow, don't kill it. Not, it cannot be a mushroom cow. Physically cannot. Stop killing them, okay? So what you want to do is you want to turn this on and run around until you find this mob. Personal tip. If you run around the stupid oasis for like a minute and can't find it, just leave that shit. The oasis sucks absolute balls. Since there's so many mobs with zero opportunity, zero chance you're actually going to find the right mob you're looking for, if you have a mob in the oasis, give up. All hope is lost. And what do you mean by give up? Well, you can either wait the 10 minutes, or you can do slash is slash warp desert. So if there's ever something you don't want to do, just do that and it'll reset it. You'll still have to wait a little bit, but you're not going to have to wait 10 minutes. So just a few tips for this. One, make sure you have some decent mage gear so you can AOTE around. Um, make sure you have eyes so they can actually see blind people i'm sorry this is not disable disable friendly you're not going to be doing well with this as you can see though if you don't like something you just take it and swap and it'll give you a better more feasible option which is always super good easiest one is desert settlement and person in desert mountain mostly because in the desert mountain the mobs just commit suicide they're just sick of this life and just say fuck you i ain't giving you shit now one key thing is you need to know all the different locations most of them make sense. The gorge is going to be kind of confusing, though. This is the Mushroom Gorge right here. If you take the bottom path down, take a left, take a right, you get into the overgrown Mushroom Cave. If you start back in at the Trapper, same position, except you take a right down here, teleport through here, and take a left, you end up in the Glowing Mushroom Cave. So just some of that stuff, just knowing how to navigate your way around the gorges and the caves and all the area can be pretty helpful. But just use your brain, you'll get the hang of it. And this will be the main way to make money, is killing animals for their pelts. 
All right, so just gonna give a quick recap for today's video. Uh, Finnegan has three different perks. One of them, the cultivating perk, is pretty much absolutely useless for profit. It's gonna do nothing. It'll do if you're planning on farming, you make a little bit more profit, but not enough to make a huge difference. Maybe investing in cultivating books or mathematic hoes could be decent profit. I just don't think they'd be going up that much, personal opinion. As for other stuff, um, during the event, the price of Jacob tickets, you might want to like, keep an eye on that. Same thing with Turbo Books, because those who are unable to get gold medals can now get gold medals. Thus, more Jacob tickets and more Turbo Books are now going to be in the market. Both of those are unreliable ways to make money. Third, and by far the best one, Trapper Shop. We don't know what the new items are going to be. They could be bad, they could be good. Either way, if they are good, having the ability to get pelt and spend those pelts on the items to make profit is a great idea. We don't know how much money it's going to make or how much it's going to cost. If you have pelts now, you can be one of the first people to buy it and then make some profit. If you don't feel up for grinding, wait a little bit and you might potentially want to buy some of the items from the tracker shop now. Or you might want to buy some of the items from the tracker shop when it's available, if they're useful. And then as price goes on and Finnegan doesn't get elected, more the price of the items will rise and rise and rise. So those are the main ways to make money. Really the last perk's the only good one. Other two ones are kind of like bleh. It's kind of like Diana. It's like, her perks are, one, one of her perks is really good. The others are just meh. Either way, see you guys next one. Subscribe. Peace out.